Is it the perfect time for a Series X Plus? Should Microsoft cancel the Series S? Let's discuss. Being an Xbox fan sometimes can be tough. Don't get me wrong, we've had a lot to celebrate over the past 20 years, or more than 20 years at this point of Xbox being a brand, but we've also had our fair share of disappointments. The entire Xbox One generation, for example, more recently having to deal with the delays of Redfall, Starfield, and some other big third-party delays. As an Xbox fan, we're always talking about the future Oh, just wait until next year, next year when the Activision Blizzard deal closes, or when Bethesda starts releasing those games, when uh, all those new exclusives that Xbox is working on finally come out. Just wait, man, just wait. And despite all that, Xbox has endured. No, they have flourished. These Xbox Series X and S consoles have become the fastest selling Xboxes in the history of the brand. And a lot of haters I know are going to be in the comments saying, oh, that's because Sony is struggling to put PlayStation 5s out on the marketplace. If they had the option, people would definitely buy a PS5, but you know what I think? I think it's because Microsoft actually managed to put out a decent product, and it's resonating with consumers. Xbox is really poised to make some noise this generation. Not only do they have all of those studios under their Xbox Game Studios umbrella, more and more people are jumping on the Game Pass train. They're recognizing the value that Microsoft is offering with that service. More and more people are trying out the Xbox ecosystem now more than ever because you can hop in on PC, you can hop in on the cloud, you can hop in on your traditional console. And on top of all of that, Sony has given Microsoft the best gift of all. I'm talking about Sony raising the price of PS5s in select countries. So this price increase hasn't come to the US just yet, but the door is definitely open. Sony raised the price on some of their other electronics in select regions. And when they were asked about if they were going to raise the price of the PS5, they basically said, hmm. They didn't say no, so that means yes, maybe? This could provide Microsoft an amazing opportunity with their gaming division. Now, before I get into this next section, I really think I have to say that I, there's no denying PlayStation's contribution to the video game industry. And personally, I've been lucky enough to either own or have in my house every PlayStation console except for the PlayStation 4, which admittedly is a big generation to miss out on. But guys, as much as you may like PlayStation products, they've been on some weird stuff lately, man. I'm talking like they're doing some like low-key kind of greedy stuff you know it started with the $70 games and of course a lot of people came out and said oh well I'll gladly pay for quality that's no problem for me I'm not a broke boy but the premise of charging $70 for a game that's basically cross-generational it's not true next-gen you're telling me that there is a $10 quantifiable difference between the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 versions of the game usually there's not then it was like they delivered deliberately made upgrading old generations of the game, getting that next-gen patch confusing, and they even charged for it, 10 bucks. Then they have the audacity to charge full price for their PC ports, which only come to Steam like four years after the game released. And of course, more recently, they raised the price of the PS5 by 50 bucks in a number of regions, even though they just admitted that the PlayStation 5 was profitable as is, without the price increase. In many ways, Xbox is the antithesis to these business practices that we're seeing from Sony. I know, very big word, antithesis, the opposite. And that's why I appreciate their presence so much this generation. First of all, for Xbox first party titles, they're still $60. They haven't experienced a $70 increase just yet. Maybe that'll come in the future, I'm not sure, but for now, $60 will get you an Xbox Series X version of a game. Xbox is over here saying, hey man, if you don't have $60 or $70 to pay up front for a game, do you have $10? Do you have $1 even? If you do, how about you try Game Pass, which has that game that you want to play, and you can try all these other games. You also don't need an Xbox to play Xbox games, as weird as that sounds. Like I said earlier, you can play on your PC if you want to. If you have a PC, no no problem, you don't have to have a separate console to play Xbox exclusive game. And we're getting closer and closer to a future where you can play all their new games on the cloud. Microsoft also gives you an affordable option. If you still want that console experience, but you don't want to pay 500 bucks for it, hey, we have the Series S. That sounds perfect for you. It's a lot cheaper, 300 bucks, sometimes even like 250 bucks. This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. 
BetterHelp connects you with therapists who are trained to listen and to help you. And if you're not super comfortable with going and seeing someone in person, this is the service for you because you can talk to someone online, in private, at your own convenience. All you have to do is fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and they'll connect you with a therapist in less than 48 hours. When we have a tough week, a tough day at work, when we get into a fight with a friend or a loved one, our go-to move is to come straight to our room and get lost in a game and try to forget about it. And while yes, that can be helpful to blow off some steam, I guarantee you the first step in solving any of your problems, no matter what they are, is to talk to someone. Better help therapists, whatever you decide to share with them, it is 100% confidential. Your information is completely safe. If you want to join the over 3 million people that have taken charge of their mental health with BetterHelp, get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash xbox ready. That's better. H-E-L-P dot com slash Xbox ready. Now, Microsoft already made a great move by coming out and saying, OK, the prices of the Xbox Series X and S, they're not going to rise. This was uh, reported by Windows Central. They reached out to them. They were like, no, we're not going to raise our prices. It's cool. But I think that they can take it a step further going into the holiday season and really, really, really go for the kill. Specifically, the Series S. Yes, I know the Series S is already pretty cheap. Three hundred dollars for a next gen console. That is a steal. But I feel like if they lowered the price of the Series S, it would sell like hotcakes in the wake of this recent price increase from Sony. They already have it sort of discounted on the Microsoft Store right now. I'm looking at it, it's $289.99. It's a $10 discount, so it's not that crazy. But it shows that they're willing to discount this console anyway, just to get into people's homes and get them to try the Xbox ecosystem. Honestly, if they can get that price down to like $250, that would be incredible. And no, they definitely wouldn't be making any money on it. They're probably not making any money on it right now, just straight up Series S sales. But the end goal here is to get these people hooked on Game Pass. It's an all digital console, so they're already predisposed to try out Game Pass already. So how can we pump up those subscription numbers, man? I feel like what would really help a lot in pushing more Series S units, besides the price decrease, is making a more affordable storage option. Right now, the only option if you want to expand your storage for the Series S and play games directly off of that storage, next gen games. I'm not talking about old games. You only have one option and that's the Seagate expandable storage. And honestly guys, they work pretty well, but they're expensive. The two terabyte one is more than the freaking Series S itself. Imagine instead of paying 150 bucks for a half terabyte, 512 gigabytes, you pay something like 75 or 100, and you can instantly upgrade your Series S while still spending way, way less than a digital PS5. It would be cool. Buy a Series S for 250 bucks, pay like 75 to 100 bucks for expandable storage, and you've addressed the biggest need for the Series S. The biggest gripe I have the Series S is the storage. It's not the performance, it's not the offerings or whatever, it's the storage, honestly. They could also take this time to introduce a new Xbox. I don't know. You know, it's probably going to be a long time until we see the Series X Plus. As much as I want to see it, as excited as I am to see what they have been working on and they have in store, I don't think we're going to see that for the next couple of years. But they could take this opportunity to maybe not introduce a pro console, but just a different Series X, a cheaper Series X. But Ray, that's just a Series S. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about the Series S. I'm not. Ta I'm talking about all the performance capabilities of your Series S. X, the storage, all of that, just a little bit cheaper. Maybe they take out the disk drive and make a digital version of the Xbox Series X and price it at 400 bucks. You keep the Series X because I love the Series X. I think it's a great console. I think 500 bucks for this thing right here, this thing right behind me is perfectly priced. So keep this the way that is. Do not change anything about this thing behind me. Keep it 500 bucks. That's the Series X with the disc. Then you have the $400 Series X with no disc. And I feel like that makes a lot of sense because PS5, they have a PS5, no disc, it's 400 bucks. The equivalent of that over on Xbox aside would be the Series S, but a Series S is not equal to a PS5. Just because they don't have any disc drive, they're all digital, does not make them the same. So Xbox could take this time to release a digital Series X, kind of like the digital PS5, and make it 400 bucks. News like Sony increasing the price of the PS5 really makes me wish that they didn't delay Project Q. 
Keystone. Now, for those of you who do not know what Project Keystone is, it's basically this new product that Microsoft is putting out, which is sort of like a streaming stick, like a Chromecast or a Roku Fire, or whatever the heck it's called, that you plug into your TV and you'll be able to access the xCloud. You'll be able to play Xbox games streaming them. But Windows Central put out an article detailing all the things that they know about the Project Keystone, about this new initiative that Xbox is working on. And the more that I read what they had to say about it, the more I thought it's less of a stick and more like something like this. This is a Google Home, but I'm thinking more of like an Xbox pod, essentially, because they were thinking of like the ability to plug in controllers, the Ethernet into this thing, which then would plug into your TV. And also, it's not just going to have Xbox Game Pass. It's also apparently going to have a whole other OS that supports all other entertainment apps like you have on your Xbox. You can watch like Netflix on it, HBO Max, whatever. And that price point would be amazing. A hundred dollars for what is essentially an alternate version of the Series S. I guess like an always online version of the Series S. You can't play games natively, of course, on the on the cloud, whatever, whatever. But a hundred dollars for an alternate version of an Xbox would kill in the wake of this news that Sony is increasing the prices of PlayStation 5s. So in this crazy scenario that I have laid out, and I know it's wild, I know it's probably a long shot that any of these ideas come to fruition, we would have a $500 Series X, just like we do now, a $400 digital Series X, a $250 Series S, and a $100 Keystone alternate cloud gaming machine. Now, again, I know it's probably a long shot that any of that is going to come to fruition besides Project Keystone. That's going to come out eventually. But whatever they decide to do, Xbox is poised to really narrow the sales gap going into the holiday season between them and the PlayStation 5. If they manage to close out the year selling as many consoles as they can, whether they decrease the price of units, whether they do some promotional stuff with some, some other like market wizardry, I don't know. I think it would be to their best benefit because then the market would be flooded with people who have Xboxes and then what comes next year, bam, you hit them with that Activision Blizzard deal. Bam, you hit them with those Bethesda exclusive. Bam, you hit them with Diablo 4. Bam, you hit them with Arc 2. Bam, you hit them with Forza Motorsport 8. And then it just takes off, baby. We ride off into the sunset. Honestly, you should be rooting for Microsoft to do well this generation. If Sony was the only one in the video game space right now, you would be paying $600 for the disc version of the PS5 you'd be paying $500 for the digital version, and you'd be paying $70 for games would be the least of your worry. They'd be able to do whatever they want with the price. That's why I don't understand when people are like, I want Xbox to die, basically. I want them to go away. I want Sony to have supremacy over everything. Nintendo to have supremacy over everything. Why would you want a less competitive marketplace? And guys, seeing a platform die is not fun. I lived through the era where the Sega Dreamcast was the death of Sega Con consoles and it was not nice it was not a fun feeling so again respect to sony playstation respect to the nintendo switch but i think xbox can really take a step up and make this generation great